بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam welcome to Islamic marriage and inshallah through this process and inshallah through this program you will be able to learn some of the ahkam of Islamic marriage the rules that relates to engagement and how a husband and wife should live together and the qualification and the attributes of a righteous husband and inshallah as well likewise a righteous wife when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his book al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena when Allah said in the Quran today I have perfected your religion indeed this religion is a perfect religion and marriage is one of the pillars, one of the important aspects of this deen. Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose us to be the successors and the maintainers and to be the successors of one another, to have the khilafah on earth. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. When he said to the angels, I am making a successor of a khalifa on earth. Those individuals that Allah was talking about was as humans. And since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his rahman mercy, from the sharia of Islam, a family unit must be maintained in the most acceptable, healthiest way. Therefore, inshallah, we will be talking about the importance of marriage to begin with this show. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree that a husband and wife must get together and from these two Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spring of children men and women as Allah said in Surah An-Nisa Ya ayyuhal nas taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathira wa nisa wa who you people fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be dutiful to him who created you from one single individual and then from that individual, from that person which is Adam, Allah created subhanahu wa ta'ala Hawa. And since that Islamic family cannot take place unless marriage is in place, then we'll let's, talk, let's talk about the marriage itself and the importance of marriage. Marriage itself is a contract and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order the believers to maintain the contracts that they give. Whether it's a buying, selling contract, whether it's a verbal contract, a written contract, rental contract, business contract, marriage contract. All of this considered to be contracts. But one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized on was the contract of marriage. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call it Mithaqan Ghaliza. Very strong Mithaq, very strong contract and covenant between husband and wife. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered both of them to maintain that by saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheena aman ufu bil uqoodi uhillati lakum. Ufu bil uqood. Or who you believe maintain your contract and your covenant and your promises. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Muslimuna ala shurutihim. Muslims must abide by their contract. So we understand that marriage itself is a contract. And not only that, marriage is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Marriage is one of the greatest ni'mah of Islam. Because through marriage, we attain comfort and ease, tranquility. And a stable life. And it is from that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala added from the ni'mah that we will never be able to count the greatness of that individual or that particular ni'mah. 
When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا And if you try to count the blessings of your Lord, you will never be able to. From the ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed on us through marriage, that our wives or our spouses are from the same race as us. We are all humans. And because of that, there are certain connections between the husband and wife. Imagine if your spouse is not from the same kind. It's not from the same race. They're not humans. But what happened then is we will fight them as we fight all other things around us. See, we have animals around us. We're almost destroying animals. We have environment around us, trees, plants. Alhamdulillah, we're also destroying that. If our spouses were other than same human, the same race as us, we would probably at one point start to destroying them also as well. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Among yourselves. When Allah first created Adam alayhi salatu was salam, and he fashioned him, and he ordered the angels to prostrate for Adam alayhi salatu was salam, and Adam was placed in paradise by himself, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from the ribs of Adam and created Eve, Hawa. Hawa was not fashioned as Adam was alayhi salam. Hawa was not created by the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like Adam. But she was created from Adam alayhi salatu was salam. So Adam feels or felt at that time that she is part of him. And she also felt that she is part of Adam. Likewise, our spouses, our wives are part of us. And we are part of them. And this is why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because that ultimate unit through intimacy, being unified, being that close to one another, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, النِّسَاءُ وَشَقَائِقُ الرِّجَالِ Where men are comparable brethren of women, or women are brethren of men. This is one of the ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourage marriage and not only that he encouraged she showed the rewards and what you will get from getting married in your life or during your life if you read in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ indeed we have sent messengers we have sent messengers before you وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَّةً and we make for them wives and children, offspring. As though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the ones that I chose, the chosen ones, prophets and the messengers, they had wives and children. Likewise, if you like to be close to those who are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you must take their footsteps and you must walk their path and you must live their lifestyle. And what did they have? Oh Allah, Allah said, they had wives and children. And inshallah we'll continue after these short messages be Ibn subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين and it's good to have you back and let us continue with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged us to do in terms of marriage if you read in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ indeed we have sent messengers we have sent messengers before you وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا and we made for them wives and children, offspring. As though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the ones that I chose, the chosen ones, prophets and the messengers, they had wives and children. Likewise, 
if you like to be close to those who are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you must take their footsteps and you must walk their path and you must live their lifestyle from the encouragements of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah said in the Quran وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا and from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course this is one of the greatest signs from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I should say this is one of the main one, one of the big signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah said وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ and from the signs of your Lord that He made for you as waj, wise وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا and then He said the purpose of this zawj the purpose of this He said لِتَسْكُنُوا so you may find comfort and ease with them here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stating in the Quran itself that it is a ni'mah from your Lord that you find someone that you feel comfortable with with your wife, you talk to her, and she talks to you. You relate, uh, you narrate things to her, and she narrates things to you. And you find comfort in that conversation and gathering. Also Allah said in the Quran subhanahu wa ta'ala, هُنَّ لِبَاسٌ لَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لِبَاسٌ لَهُنْ They are garments for you, and you are garments for them. Means, they cover you and they cover them. They are part of you and you are part of them. Also from the Sharia of Islam, Ikhwati Fillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in very loving way, He ordered us to get married when He said, Fankihu ma taba lakum min al nisa, matna wa thulatin wa ruba. Now here He said, Marry the women of your choice. He, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suggests, he suggests it because it's something that is highly recommended. Some of the ulama of Islam, they will consider marriage as wajib. And they said it is must to get married because all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with exceptions of Yahya alayhi salatu wa salam, and Isa when he will come back, he will also will get married like all the other prophets in his subhanahu wa ta'ala. With the exceptions of Yahya, all of the messengers of Allah were married. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he said, فَأَنْكِحُ Some of the ulama, they took that this is an order from Allah, ordering us to get married, and all therefore we all should get married, بِإِذْنِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فَأَنْكِحُ مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَى وَالثُلَاسَى وَرُبَعَى From the ni'mah, or from the hikmah of the sharia, is that through marriage you attain rewards. Every time a man is close to his wife and they exercise what Allah has made lawful for them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards that person for that act of intimacy. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if one of you sleeps with his wife, then he will be rewarded. It is a charity, it's an act of charity. The Sahaba of the Messenger of Allah said, Ya Rasulullah, ayati ahaduna shahwata. O Messenger of Allah, we satisfy our desire, yet we are rewarded for that. We are giving, we are rewarded as though we gave sadaqa. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, what would you say if you fulfill that desire through haram means? Wouldn't he be sin? Wouldn't he be falling into a sin? They said yes. He said likewise. When the person spends the time with his wife and he fulfills that natural desire and she fulfills her natural desire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them both. And for them is an act of sadaq. Also, Ikhwati Fillah, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to encourage them husbands to work for the family. He said, A dinar that you spend on your family. 
and the nad that you give it to a needy person, and the nad that you give fi sabilillah for the sake of Allah, a'zamuha ajran. He said the one that has the greatest reward, he said the dinar that you spend on your family. Dinar that you spend on your family. So even as a husband, when you work for your family, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for the effort that you give and that it will be a sadaqah for you. In another hadith, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Indeed, you are rewarded for everything that you do, for any nafaqa, for anything that you give, you are rewarded. He said, even the food that you put in the mouth of your wife, that is a sadaqah for you, that's a charity for you. Now the ulama rahimahumullah, they interpret this statement of the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in two ways. One, they said, it means providing for the family is sadaq. Other, other ulama said that is acceptable, but it also means to be kind and to hand feed your wife or spoon feed your wife, put the food in her mouth with your own hand, that is a sadaq. That's a sadaq for the husband. And of course, if the wife does the same thing, that's a sadaqah for her as well. From the lessons and from the benefit of marriage, ikhwati fillah, is that marriage, Allah will bless you wealth. Through marriage, Allah will bless you wealth. See, a lot of people, they misunderstand and they think, if I get married, subhanallah, I have to take care of my wife, I have to take care of the children, the expenses of the family. What they don't realize is, as soon as they get married, Allah will bless them with rizq. As a matter of fact, one of the three categories of people that Allah made wajib upon Himself to maintain and to give and to bless them are those individuals seeking marriage so they can protect themselves from ma'asiyah. They go and they get married because they are afraid if they don't get married, they may fall into a sin, to a zina. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it is wajib upon me, and no one has authority over Allah, but He out of generosity and kindness, He said, I made wajib on myself that if this is your intention, I will provide for you. In the Quran, we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَنْكِحُوا الْأَيَامَ مِنْكُمْ وَالصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ عِبَادِكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and marry those of you who are single. Allow them to marry from you, and you marry them, those who are single, from your community. And then Allah added something that is very unique. He said, إِنْ يَكُونُوا فُقَرَاء If these individuals are poor, يُغْنِيهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ if they are poor, Allah will provide for them from His bounty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wasi' and alim of the condition of those people. So sometimes a lot of people miss this point and they think marriage means more money. They don't understand Allah will bless them with more money, similar by getting married. Aisha radiyallahu anha said, if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you with wealth, then أَكْثُرُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ Marry more women and having children is a mean of rizq. When you have children, Allah will bless you with rizq. If you get married today and you really don't have much, you don't have much, and you did it for the sake of protecting yourself, then Allah will find ways for you. If you have children, if you have a child and you really were not ready financially, do not worry because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantee that He will provide for you, He will provide for your wife, He will provide for that child. As a matter of fact, if you don't have children, you're missing rizq, you're missing some. And that's why as soon as a person gets married, his life changed the better if they did it for the right reasons.
We have young people in my community. No more kid, alhamdulillah, struggling with his daily bread, and then he gets married. And next thing that you know, mashallah, he's blessed with a nice job, he's driving a nice vehicle, his life changed around. And even his peers, his friends, they say, look, he's a completely different person. That is because as soon as you take that step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would help you and provide for you. Also, through marriage, we have children. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَجَعَلَ لَكُم مِّنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ بَنِينَ وَحَفَدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made out of you from that rib, a spouse, a mate. And from that mate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, children. And from those children, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul, وَحَفَدَ وَحَفَدَ And grandchildren, and grandchildren. So from the ni'am of Islam and from the blessings of Allah, it all this come under title or under the blessing of marriage, Islamic marriage. And this is when you do it for the right reason, bi-idnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, every young man and every young lady, they should look towards getting married, but also there are certain things that you need to do before you take this important steps in your life, which these steps, insha'Allah, will be covered by Ibn subhanahu wa ta'ala, the upcoming episodes. So my nasiha to you is, follow it, insha'Allah, and by Ibn subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what I have to say. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.